I want to share with you a few thoughts about anemia and do that at the hand of a piece of art by Kathleen Joyce called the Red Balloon Dress, which you can see here on the left hand side. This is the uh, original picture, um, this one here by Kathleen Joyce. And you can see this young woman with uh, 14 red balloons. And I'm just going to write 14 there and you'll see why later. In the second picture, you can see that I have uh, doctored, no pun intended, the second picture and she now has only eight balloons. So something has happened from picture one to picture two, whereby she has lost eight balloons. Now, the question is, we want to determine what happened to the missing balloons. And we're going to try and use that metaphor to give you a good approach to thinking about anemia and how red blood cells can get lost. So let's go um, back to basics and we think about balloons and the way they are produced. So all of this would start, uh, let's draw a little factory here. So that's the balloon factory. Okay, let's make it BF, balloon factory. And the balloon factory will produce balloons, uh, some of which will go into storage. Let's say that is the storage area there. And then the balloons will be delivered to the lady who will then sell them. Now let's say every week maybe uh, 10 balloons are delivered to her and she sells 10 balloons as well. That would mean that the total number of balloons will remain at 14, just for the sake of the example. But let's say we move to the situation here on the right where suddenly one morning she gets up and she sees a stack of balloons and she finds that today she only has eight. The question is what happened to the rest of the balloons and how can we think about that? Now when we study what could happen to balloons we could think about their nature and we could say okay balloons uh, in the, this case they are filled with helium so well they could perhaps get lost so let's just draw some balloons here that are flying up into the air due to the helium gas inside or maybe some naughty person came and stuck needles into them and the balloons were destroyed so let's write destroyed here all right so destroyed or it may be possible that something is wrong in the factory yeah and the factory production has decreased or has become abnormal all of these factors could lead to a decrease in the number of the balloons and now obviously when we think about this we will start looking for clues as to what could be the problem let's say for instance that we we can uh, go around and ask people to say, have you seen any balloons flying up into the air? And that may give us the answer to this question. Or for the destruction component, have you seen any balloon pieces lying around? Okay, little balloon fragments, let's say like this here. Um, if there are fragments of balloons lying on the ground, it may mean that they have burst and that they were destroyed. Or we could look at the actual balloon quality and we can say okay has the quality stayed the same do they still have the same size and color like usual which could indicate that the factory may be having problems now let's take this story to the production of red blood cells and we're going to use um, the same metaphor here of the factory so we have the bone which contains the bone marrow inside and this is the factory of blood obviously and from the bone marrow, blood will be, as it's being produced, the red blood cells will move into the circulation. And, well, if we get to a situation where the red blood cells decrease in number, we call that anemia. So let's say this picture here on the right will represent anemia. Uh, on the left, this would be the normal. This would represent the normal situation. So what can happen 
that would lead to a decrease in the number of red blood cells or a decrease in hemoglobin, well, the blood can get lost, just like the balloons here, through bleeding. Or the red blood cells could be destroyed, um, and we could look for signs of that destruction. For instance, there may be red cell fragments visible in the peripheral blood, literally little fragments of red blood cells that could tell us that a fragmentation, hemolysis, is taking place, such as in TTP or DIC. So TTP is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, DIC, diffuse intravascular coagulation, or heart valves and many other causes. Or it is also possible in the case of red blood cells that the patient may have destruction of the red blood cells by an autoimmune hemolytic anemia, for instance. So you could have, um, now let's just pretend that these balloons are now the red blood cells and the patient is producing these little antibodies against the red blood cells and the antibodies will be recognized by the macrophages, which we'll draw here. And the macrophages, macro means big, phage, eat, to eat, so the big eaters, or, um, they will come and recognize these antibodies and they will destroy the red blood cell. Sometimes they just take little bites out and what would happen then is the red blood cell would change from its normal biconcave shape to round and smaller round cells, so-called little spherocytes. And that may be an indication of an autoimmune hemolytic anemia, for instance. There are also other things, just like we looked at the balloons and their color and their size, we can also look at the size of the red blood cells under the microscope and through some laboratory tests, like the full blood count, and we could say, oh my goodness, these red blood cells are too small. They have a decreased mean cell volume, or MCV, and they may lack in color. So they could be hypochromic, hypo, it's not very well written here, but hypochromic chromic, which means they are low in color, they are pale. Now both of these could indicate that there may be something wrong in terms of, for instance, the materials that the bone marrow needs, such as iron, for instance, Fe stands for iron. Um, or you could perhaps find, looking under the microscope, you may find that these red blood cells are too big, they are very large. So the MCV is increased, and that may indicate, for instance, there may be different causes, but that there's a lack of B12 or folate. Um, these are just two of the common causes. There are many, many others. Um, and obviously then you may also find red blood cells that are completely normal with a normal MCV. And in the presence of anemia, there may be a whole range of causes for that. Nevertheless, the, the picture that I'm painting here is that the problem can be either in the loss of red blood cells, just like the loss of balloons, such as in bleeding, the destruction of red blood cells due to, for instance, hemolytic anemias or problems with fragmentation hemolysis, or the problem may be in the factory of blood, in the bone marrow. So there may be an inherent bone marrow disease or a problem with the materials required to build red blood cells, such as iron, B12, folate, or there may be problems with the molecules that make up the red blood cell the heme, the globin, such as in thalassemia or sickle cell anemia or the membrane of the red blood cell, maybe something like a spherocytosis, for instance. All of these things could obviously give rise to anemia. One cause that is not that common, but that may sometimes be found, is the one related to the what I would like to call the storage part of the bone marrow here. So you could make the balloons, put them in storage before delivery, just like the situation of the balloons, we can also have something similar happening in the body when the spleen enlarges. So when the, let's say this is the spleen here, the spleen almost functions like a parking lot or a storage space. So the bigger the spleen, the more red blood cells will find parking spots in the spleen. And literally, the bigger the spleen is, the more parking spots there will be available, and they will get stuck there. So the number of red cells in the circulation may decrease, and that could also lead to anemia 
and that is what we call hypersplenism hypersplenism you see with this uh, sort of handwriting um, I cannot compete with any of the artists that I use here but nevertheless hypersplenism may also lead to a decrease in platelet count or white blood cell count but it's just important to remember we've got a factory uh, we've got storage we've got loss and we've got destruction and then obviously one can start looking for signs and features that would suggest any of these for instance if you find that all the blood counts are low the red cells the platelets and the white blood cells the problem is very likely in the factory because it's not that common that all the counts will be low um, with destruction for instance sometimes you have a combination of red cells and platelets that is low with destruction but not normally all of them you may have it with a big spleen or hypersplenism that all three are, in, are, are low but that would be much less common but it is a possibility then you may find other possible um, evidence for what is happening for instance you can go and look around and see if there's any of the content of the red blood cell are circulating in the blood for instance an enzyme called LDH if that is increased then well that may indicate that hemolysis is taking place or you can look as I said for pieces of membrane or we know that the red cells contain hemoglobin and when hemoglobin is released due to destruction for instance the hemoglobin will bind uh, okay that's supposed to be HB will bind to something called HAP globin and the haptoglobin and the hemoglobin together will be removed from the circulation and this will lead to a decrease in the haptoglobin level and when the haptoglobin level is very low together with an LDH level that is very high that may well give you a suggestion that there is hemolysis taking place and in a similar fashion there are many other blood tests and when you now go and study this part of your work you could um, you can really go in there and just add in the other features um, into this total picture or total approach to the problem of anemia. So I hope that made it a little bit more understandable. It's a very basic um, video, but, but I believe if you understand the concepts underlying um, hematological and other diseases, it's much easier to remember. You don't have to really study so hard. You can just have this deep understanding and it will really benefit you and your patients so i i really hope you enjoyed that